This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. It's okay to have bad days. It's okay to have a lot of bad days. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you. You just need some support. Visit betterhelp.com super and let's figure out how to take care of you. Hey, brother! Guys, have you ever wondered what's behind each character's door in Encanto? We know that upon turning five, each character is gifted with a magical room inside the house. And we know that despite the relatively normal looking size of Casita, that each individual room can be massive on the inside and bigger than Casita itself. Something that really gives this line way more context, once you know. Clean your rooms. I don't care how big they are. But the rooms aren't just huge. They are straight up fantastical. The one we spend the most amount of time in is for sure Antonio's. And after he is gifted the ability to speak to animals, his room transforms into a literal jungle. Can you even imagine trying to vacuum that place? Because I, I can't, I, lit I literally can't. You vacuum the tree? This tells us unsurprisingly that the rooms tend to reflect the power of of the owner, but sadly, we only ever really get to spend that much time in three characters' rooms, Antonio's, Bruno's, and Isabella's. That leaves seven more unknown magical doors, which of course left us wondering, what is behind each door? Well, today we find out. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Word of advice, guys, if there's one thing most people overlook when they're starting out with a small business, myself included, it's shipping. It can be time consuming and expensive with all the different fun stuff and merch we send out. But luckily, we can count on Stamps.com to not only save us money, but also trips to the post office. Because with Stamps.com, you can print postage right from your computer and get deals you can't get anywhere else. In fact, right at this very moment, we are in the process of starting to launch a new venture over on the Supercarlin Gaming channel. And I can't give it away or anything, but we will definitely be shipping out quite a few Pokemon cards in the near future. And honestly, we wouldn't be able to make this extension without stamps.com because the process is just so cost effective and efficient. All you need is a computer and a standard printer and you are up and running in minutes printing postage for anything you might need to send. So whether you're in a big office or a warehouse or it's just your side hustle, stop overpaying for postage and sign up for stamps.com. And if you sign up with the promo code SuperCarlin, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contract required. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top right corner of the page and enter code SuperCarlin. One more time, stamps.com, promo code SuperCarlin. Link is in the description down below. Guys, look how shiny this shirt is. Am I right? Okay, so first let's start with how the doors actually work and how the rooms are even created to begin with. We aren't really told the exact details in the movie, but after a month of waiting, my copy of The Art of Encanto finally came in the mail, finally, and it has some very cool information on exactly this thing. As we see with Antonio, as each child in the Madrigal family approaches their fifth birthday, a door will begin to form and start glowing inside the house and then finally be ready to be open on their fifth birthday. But the room behind the door actually doesn't form at all until the moment the child touches the doorknob and receives their gift. Which as a parent, I have to tell you, I was relieved because I've had to do the thing where you assemble the gifts the night before Christmas or their birthday before. And if I had to assemble that jungle all by myself, oh my gosh, that would have been a butt. Then after the gift has been discovered, the room is meant to amplify the gift and give the user a place to practice and hone whatever it is. So, for example, let's start with Bruno's room. It has the constant falling sand. Why? Because sand is integral to how Bruno performs his gift. He has to make that circle ahead of time. Less sure why the stairs are necessary, unless maybe you need, like, really great calves to predict the future. I don't know. Needless to say, though, I have sent enlisted the help of a walking desk, so I have a feeling I'll be seeing the future in pretty much no time. I even got sand. Oh, oh no, it's leaking. I <laughs> Yeah, it's like 50 pounds. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's all over me. I really hope you guys laughed at that joke because it is on me now and I feel like it's gonna be there probably uh, close to forever. Although, fun fact about Bruno's room, the final design was actually inspired by a naturally occurring landform in Colombia called the Los Estraques, which I'm positive I said wrong. They are really cool though. They're these large brownstone pedestals and columns formed by thousands of years of erosion. Of course, that's not Bruno's only room in the house. He also has the extremely non-magical room behind the walls where he's been living for the last 10 years. And according to my book here, their basic rule for this room was just that like none of the furniture was allowed to be 
normal. Much like Bruno himself as a recluse, it all had to be worn out, broken, and held together by scraps. Which, now that I'm saying that out loud, is really sad. That said, despite the room being fairly mingled together, I still personally operate under the assumption that Casita was still secretly helping Bruno out and at least giving him a little extra room to, you know, breathe. But next, let's move on to Isabella. And her room's pretty interesting because the whole thing is just flowers, or at least a place for her to practice growing flowers, which is interesting because we eventually learned that that is not the full extent of her powers. She's obviously really good at it, but something that was actually lost on me until we were writing this video is how the curtains of flowers in her room are actually meant to represent how she feels trapped by her power and inside of perfection. Not gonna lie, her room also had a fairly significant impact on my life. I'm not sure if you've heard recently, but I've been getting into plants and already I can see new horizons. Basically taking everything about this movie to heart. I got plants and calves and sand. What else do you need? This is Chad, by the way, in case you'd like to say hello in the comments. Oh no, I got sand all over him. And me. But those are the characters whose room we actually got to spend some time in and are probably not the reason you clicked on this video. So let's start talking about characters whose rooms we didn't get to see, starting with Luisa. And honestly, I'm so bummed we did not get to see Luisa's room because apparently they spent a lot of time storyboarding and developing it before finally deciding to leave it on the cutting room floor. Just kidding, actually. The concept art all made it into this book and it is really cool because we know that even outside of Luisa's magically gifted strength, she is just genuinely interested Interested in working out and being physically fit. I mean, look at this. She can already lift this entire church without any noticeable effort. Do you really think she needs to be doing this dumbbell treadmill workout as well? But the point is, the room she would have had was going to be inspired by this very idea. And they came at it from a few different angles. Originally, it was going to be made completely out of stone to also represent that she's the responsible one. But then, of course, she could also, you know, move the stones around to just work out. But what's really fun about that room is that it was going to have a second secret door on the inside that led to a hidden amusement park that was just for Luisa as a place she could go to relax. Best room ever, am I right? Except that if she already had a way to relax, I think it would have taken away from her character arc of overcoming all the weight of expectations. In that same line of thinking though, another idea they had was to have a like beachside gym space she could work out on. So again, she could work out, but then would also be at the beach so she could relax. But again, scrapped. Next, let's swap over to the other side of the family with Peppa, whose room, believe it or not, we actually do get to see the inside of for like one hot second when Mirabelle is chasing Bruno through the walls of Casita. And just to be clear, in case you're wondering, yes, this is officially Peppa's room and not Camillo's as confirmed by the director, Jared Bush, on Twitter. Not that I think it even looks like it has anything to do with Camillo anyway, other than the fact that he's just also standing in it. But really, Peppa's room is surprisingly normal by Madrigal standards. Like you can see, there's definitely a weather theme with the raindrops on the wall and the shapes of the beads on this lamp. Actually, there's also a very niche Easter egg in this room in the form of this teapot, which is an animation tool called the Utah teapot. But if you really want to know anything more about that, we have a full video about it, Michael. But other than the raindrops, you can also see a weather vane and a barometer, both of which are tools to measure the weather. But overall, I think the simpleness of Peppa's room actually makes a lot of sense. Sure, she has some tools in there to help her measure and experiment with her powers, but it's also very plain and calming, something you'd have to think that Peppa would really appreciate. I mean, if it was like a wide open field or an ocean or something in there and her power started to get like out of control, it could get like really, really out of control. Speaking of plain rooms though, next let's talk about Abuela. Her power, in case you are unaware, is to be the keeper of the miracle, which is eventually passed on to Mirabelle at the end of the movie. And we only get to very briefly see inside of Abuela's room and much like Peppa's, it's very plain and normal looking on the inside, but it turns out it is also quite tragic because Abuela's room is actually an exact recreation of this room right here where she first told her husband, Pedro, that they were going to be having triplets. And again, it makes sense. Her power is the keeper of the miracle. And by the end of the movie, she finally re-realizes that the miracle is the family itself, not their powers. And as such, her room represents where the family started. Like if she's the keeper of the miracle, then her room is serving as a constant reminder of what the miracle is. Moving on though, let's talk about Dolores. Sadly, we don't really ever get to see the inside of her room and the Art of Encanto book doesn't even reveal any information about it either. But over on Twitter, the director, Jared Bush, has given us some hints. He says here, there's definitely some soundproofing in there. Which at first I thought like, well, that doesn't really make sense. I mean, how would soundproofing help 
you're hearing. Wouldn't that cancel out all the things you were supposed to hear? But bear in mind that Dolores' hearing is so refined that even from inside her soundproof room, she can still hear Luisa's eye twitching all night long. So I have to imagine that for Dolores, existing anywhere outside of her room is probably really difficult because the cacophony must just never end. Like when she got her power as a kid, did she just like immediately start screaming like, ah! My point is, I bet it was very hard to focus on just a single sound for quite some time. But from within her room, it seems like she can at least cancel out enough noise to focus in on really specific things. Like, for example, Mariano reading poetry and helping his mother every night. But now that brings us to the two most mysterious rooms of the house, the one no one has given us any glimpse inside of or any hints about, Julieta's and Camillo's. But based on how all the other characters' rooms work, I think we can make some pretty solid guesses about what's inside. Julieta's powers are healing by way of cooking, so it'd be very easy to think that there's just a kitchen in there, and I think that is a very real possibility. I mean, again, in Peppa's room, we see tools to measure the weather, so I think it would totally make sense for Julieta's room to have tools for cooking, pots and pans and knives and stuff. If there is a kitchen in there, that does only account for the cooking half of her power, though, not the healing half. But I think we can get a hint from her wardrobe as to what might account for that. Of course, she's almost always seen wearing an apron, but it's what's on and in the apron that I'm interested in. Herbs. In fact, it says in here from Griselda Sastruanata LeMay, the visual artist who worked on her costume. Julieta's power is healing, so I wanted to find iconography that symbolizes both healing and cooking. Herbs felt like the perfect balance of both. So in addition to cooking equipment, I have to think that Julieta's room is also equipped with like an epic herb garden. And that that's where she's getting all the herbs that you see in her pockets in her apron. Which I love that she really cares how good the food tastes because you'd think that the food has the healing properties pretty much either way, right? Guess nobody ever told that to regular medicine though, huh? Robitussin. I love the idea of her having an herb garden in there though, because then it also sort of like has a connecting string to her eldest daughter, Isabella, who of course also likes to grow things. That said, if you disagree with that or have other ideas for what might be in Julieta's room, please let me know in the towel section down below. And then we have Camillo and his shape-shifting, and sadly, I don't think his chameleon-clad wardrobe is going to help us determine what's in his room as much as it did for Julieta. Because, I mean, I doubt it's just like, Lizard room! Instead, and this is just my personal guess, but I think it must be full of mirrors. And this would actually serve two major purposes. First is just that one of the way actual actors, you know, practice different emotions and getting into character is by staring at themselves in the mirror. And Camillo's not just trying to practice one emotion, he's trying to perfectly replicate other people's entire bodies. Camilo, fix your face. Plus, I mean, just look how perfectly his hair falls halfway over his face and the way he's wearing that poncho over just one shoulder. <laughs> you know he's spending like an hour in the mirror each day just trying to really perfect that I don't really care look perfectly. But then the other half of the mirror would be that it shows you you. Much like Peppa's room might keep her calm or Dolores' room might cancel out the noise, this is a great way for Camilla to remember that no matter what shape you take, you are always still you. But speaking of seeing the real you, that of course brings us to Mirabelle, who, similar to Bruno, sort of ends up with two rooms. The first is just, of course, the one we see her in at the beginning of the movie, the family nursery where all the kids stay until they turn five. This is why, for the most part, the room is decorated like a kid's room with animals and letters on the wall. But that's why it was very important to the creators of the movie to have Mirabelle's corner of the room just be covered in little quirky objects and all the different crafts she makes. But then there's Mirabelle's second door, which of course she finally gets at the end of the movie, but again, it's kind of unique because the door she opens doesn't lead to just one specific room for her. It's the front door of the entire house. This is because by the end of the movie, Mirabelle has become the new keeper of the miracle, so the entire house is effectively her room. Honestly, it's not really that different from what happened with Abuela. At the time, her door would have just led to her room, which we can see from the old house is where the entire family would have been staying. She was in charge of the miracle that was the triplets in the one room that they all shared. But Mirabelle takes over further down the line, so her door now has to encompass everyone else living in the house as well, which is why it's the front door. But there you go, guys. That's what's behind everyone's door at Casita Madrigal. 
Hey, if you're wondering how you can make sure you get cool shirts just like this one in the future, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash supercarlinbrothers and sign up for the Super Carlin Shirt Club. We have awesome exclusive shirts that come out every single quarter. But guys, as always, thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and ding that bell. If you'd like to see our entire Encanto playlist, you can do so by clicking right here. We have like so many videos about this movie. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another life, brother.